Sean Ruff wow, Phillips. Wow, welcome. <laughs> welcome, legend. Hey. Thank you very much. How's Cape Town treating you so far? So far, so good. And looking forward to the carnival tomorrow. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be great. We, the city is very, very excited to have uh, mm. Manchester City in town. Sure. Sean, um, what a great career you've had. Mm -hmm. Manchester City, Chelsea, Manchester City, then Crystal Palace, and then you went over to, to MLS. Just listening to that um, commentary, though, um, a lot of crucial goals that you scored in your career. Um, to be honest, when it comes to goals, it was all a blur for me. Mm. Um, yeah. When I played, it was more about entertaining the fans and creating chances for others. I very rarely scored a tapping because I was just never in the box. Whereas if I played for Pep, yeah. I must probably would have scored a lot more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, just uh, it, it must have been a lot for you to live up to. I mean, your dad is one of the greatest strikers in the history of football, uh, most certainly for, for Arsenal and England. Um, when did he start giving you a ball to kick around? Was there a lot of pressure on you to to be like your dad? Um that was, I think that was the art of me growing up with my brother. My, mm. Our dad never gave us a ball. Mm. We picked up mm. the ball because we wanted to pick up the ball. Mm. And we fell in love with the game because we felt that was the path we wanted to take in life. Mm. He never pushed it on us. I've never pushed it on my kids either. And I think football, you either love it or you don't love it. Because mm. we were talking, just uh, alluding to you coming uh, on the show earlier this week, just about... Um, the success of um, kids following in their parents' footsteps. And we were using uh, David Beckham as an example. You know, we, we, his sons don't play. The one plays, but it's not really that good. Um, to a degree, not like of his father's stature, obviously. Um, so those genes don't necessarily just pass down directly. And the interest and passion too. Right? Yeah. Like you said, you've got to want it. Yeah, you, you have to love it. I've mm. got, obviously, my son, who plays professionally, he's on loan in Belgium at the minute, and I've got a 10-year-old daughter that trains for art, trains with Arsenal, So, and I've never once kicked a ball with them. Mm. Really? Mm. I don't don't think I need to. They've asked me loads of times. They're like, no, if you want to play, go and play. Me and your brother, me and your uncle Bradley, we taught ourselves because that was the path we chose and that's what we wanted to do. Mm. Right, so you don't, hey, do it like this. You want to do these skills, do it like this, do it like that? No, because I think if they're going to be a player, I want them to be their own player. I want mm. them to mold their self rather than do things the way I did it. Because mm. the way I did it, although it was successful for me, may not be successful for them because football changes and evolves all the time. Yeah, mm. and just to the path, um, my son is here. That that's my son, by the way. Manchester City. Didn't get his looks from you, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Tell mom. <laughs> He's uh, the biggest man Man City fan that you're ever going to meet. Um, formidable football player. Um, and you just look at the the academy system. I mean, his dream is to play for Manchester City. He wants to take a Holland spot right now, right? <laughs> goals, 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 do that. Yeah. So, so what, what would your advice be for, for, for all these budding football stars on... Uh, because you were at the... Not, Notting, were you at the Nottingham Forest Academy? No, City Academy. Man City Academy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was a schoolboy at Forest. Mm. That's right, okay. Yeah. So um, at what age did you get drafted into the academy? 16. 16 yeah that's that's when it was it was it i got drafted in just when it left yts and went into proper school boys where you had to go to college like once a week mm -hmm. and i didn't really start playing sunday league football till i was 12. so okay. in in football terms that's really quite late especially now kids are playing from what six seven mm -hmm. years old yeah and and for kids and now i just say enjoy it Mm. I think if you if you don't enjoy football and you see it as a chore and a job mm. at your young age, then mm. I don't think your career will last that long unless mm. you, you, you're focused in a different way where you see it just solely as a business. Mm. Because you look at like Ronaldo's son. Now you can imagine he implores that Ronaldo regime into his son. No KFC, no mm. lacquer chicken. <laughs> it's it's boiled with boiled rice with spinach. And even he said that he doesn't think his son's going to make it. Because it's hard. It's the, hard. The, the football world isn't, it's not for everybody. Mm. I think people almost forget that the mental downs to it. 
Like it's it's challenging in so many ways. I'll, I'll give you an example with my son. He went to Stoke from Man City. Done his youth well, played in the second team, got his chance in the first team, did really well, scored goal, player of the month, new manager comes in, mm. don't play him. Not part of the plan. No reason new for vision. whatever. Mm. He's 20 years old. Mm. He's never had to deal with that before. Yeah. So you can see it's easy for people like that to then just curl up into a ball and mentally mm. not be able to cope with it. Yeah. That's when I think me as a parent, that's who's been through it, can then be involved and be to yeah. him like, just chill. It's On the mental side. Yeah, you just, yeah. Ch just chill. You're doing something you love at the end of the day. Mm. It's not all rosies. Yeah. Mm. It's, and it's not it's the hard. end. It's not the end of the world either. I mean, I mean, because obviously with all due respect to Stoke, but going from Man City to Stoke, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, I'm going backwards. Yeah, but sometimes you have to go backwards to go forward in life no matter what you do. Yeah. It doesn't matter this. the size of the club or what it is. If you want to play football, Sometimes mm. to get to where you need to get, you have to go and shine somewhere else. Mm. Where it may be backwards, it may be level club or st from Man City. What isn't a backward step? Mm. Right. Yeah. It's always going to be backwards unless you go to maybe a Liverpool or an Arsenal. Yeah. I noticed you didn't mention the other because yeah. that is a backward <laughs> step. <laughs> And that's what brings you to Cape Town, Man City showing off, uh, you know, the, the five trophies that were, were won uh, last season. That's a full cabinet. At some point, you must be like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's, it's something I would say for the club and the supporters through what they've been through over the last 20, 30 years that mm. I think they deserve. Yeah. But at the same time, I think if City still had a takeover and they didn't have five trophies, mm. they would still be in South Africa today mm. because they still would do the programs that they're doing and work with the mm. partners that they work with. So right. the trophies is kind of like the icing on the cake, for, mm. especially for the city fans, mm. because it's something they can get close to that they may never have had a chance to, especially the ones that don't get to go to games. So mm. see it just like, well, if you can't come to us, we're going to come to you sort yeah. of thing and help out in the community as well. And just uh, as uh, the, the life of a professional footballer, how many days a week are you training there? What does the, the day look like? Honestly, it really does depend on your manager. Mm -hmm. okay. Some It depends on the older school managers, like say your Sam Allardyce's and stuff like that. You would normally, I would say, have a Wednesday off, light Monday because of the game on the weekend, until the, the thick of the season starts, because then you're playing three times a week, especially if you was in the championship. Mm. But if you're at a top Premier League club, you're pretty much in a hotel pretty much <laughs> most of the time. Right. Mm. I, I, my first awakening of it was when I signed for Chelsea mm. and they were in the Champions League and everything. And Mourinho used to like having us in the hotels the night before the game. Mm. I had bought a house. I remember going to him and saying, why didn't you just tell me I wouldn't just bought a house, I'd have just lived in a hotel because that's basically what I'm doing anyway, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it really does depend on the manager and how well your club is doing. Yeah. Um, and and the moving from watching the, the David Beckham documentary, he said when he went to MLS, the, the American Soccer League, he said him and Posh on his first day there, because it was obviously this is this big star coming to change the game and uplift the American game. And he said in the documentary, they sat there, him and Posh were going, what have we done? These people can't play soccer. They, I mean, firstly, the fact that they referred to it as soccer was <laughs> offensive to them. He said, they can't play football. What have I done? I'm playing with, you know, these are not professional players. And he was actually embarrassed. And that's when he switched back. And it was Inter Milan he went back to. Yeah. So you went and you played for New York Red Bulls and New York Red Bulls was top, top team at the time. What was the, the difference like? I mean, there's the obvious, it's not going to be the same. But, um, and I'm sure it's leveled up since David Beckham was the first to arrive. Um, playing Major League American soccer versus Europe. It's completely levels apart if I'm totally honest, and that's no disrespect to the MLS. I think the thought process in-game is by far quicker in the UK. I think the problem the American system has is that every club stuck to a budget. You have three DPs. Once those DPs take up the majority of the budget, there's a lot of people that you can't pay to keep. 
Mm. So the younger, talented kids, which there are actually so many of them, I've seen firsthand. Some of them just say, "Okay, I'm gonna have to go to uni and get a proper job because I can't afford to pay for food or I can't afford to pay for somewhere to live." So their parents push them mm. into obviously proper jobs, which is totally understandable. So for me, until they get rid of that bracket mm. and pay in a way their own talent properly. Mm. That never, you're never gonna see the MLS get to where it should get to yeah. without bringing in DPs to to kind of build up the league. Yeah. Like nobody, people have now invested back into the MLS because Messi's there yeah. and Jordi yeah. Alba's there. Other than that, it kind of took a nosedive, but they needed to do something, and Messi was that person. Mm. But it's it's a long way from being where it needs to be. Um, Sean, I know you've got such a hectic schedule. You had two very quick questions. First one. I saw that they say 1% of the kids in academy football now make it. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's been like that pretty much <laughs> my whole life. So I sure. don't think a lot's changed there. But in terms of levels, I would say it's, it's a lot higher in terms of the quality of kid that has to come through. And if you look at Phil Fold and how good he was and look how long it took him to come through. Into the first team. Yeah, so yeah. The, there's a lot for them to compete with when you've got people like Kevin De Bruyne playing in front of you. It's no easy challenge for anybody, is it? Mm. And uh, maybe you can settle the age-old debate right here, right now. Resi, uh, Resi. Yeah. <laughs> Messi or Ronaldo? Oh, Messi for me all day long. Oh, stop. Thank Come you. On. I've been having long. this stop. argument <laughs> with this man <laughs> for close to a decade. <laughs> <laughs> it's personal it's preference. It's aged me. Uh, but I think it's personal preference, <laughs> it's to be it's honest it's with it's you. Which it style like, do you prefer? Which yeah, kind of footballer I'm, do you he, like? For me, Messi is all round. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo is just a goal scorer. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's a beast in front of goal. But for Messi, it's just flair. I just love watching the way mm. he just dribbles past people. And he does it still now when he wants to. It's like yeah. a light switch. Mm. You saw him do it at the World Cup. Walking around, you give him the ball. And he can just make something happen out of nothing. Whereas I feel like with Ronaldo, you have to feed him more. The Ronaldo of Manchester United when he was there was a complete different Ronaldo to what he's finished us. Right. Thank okay. you for that. Okay. That settled well, there you thing. Go, I lose that Welcome one. to that's, Cape Town. That's in the <laughs> professional opinion of uh, the now, can we say football legend, Sean Wright Phillips? You can say what you like. <laughs> Man, welcome to South Africa and more specifically welcome to Cape Town thank you enjoy the Cape Town Carnival and enjoy the, the, the trophy tour it's going to be, do. It's be been, so much fun been practicing my dancing so yeah. it's all good <laughs> <laughs> Sean Wright Phillips Manchester City on tour this weekend uh, we'll put all the details up that we've already told you about mm. uh, go get some pics with the trophy and with this legend and also the, with the, Manchester Manchester of course KFM Morning